Welcome to LabMins.com. In this video, we will look at how to enable Cisco TrustSec on Cisco Nexus 1000V. As a version 421 SV2, which is what we are currently running in this lab, Nexus 1KV is capable of static SGT assignment at port profile and communicating it to TrustSec demand using SXP. It cannot, however, insert SGT into the packet or acting as SGT enforcement point. If you are not familiar with Cisco TrustSec, I encourage you to watch our video, SEC 0061, Introduction to Cisco TrustSec, just to get a better understanding of the subject before proceeding with this lab. Here's our lab setup. So here we have two Window 2008 test machine. They will be assigning two different SGT values. With the Win 2008 DC, you have the SGT value of 100, that only going to have the HTTP only access. And the Win 2008 42, that we have SGT value of 101 with the ICMP only access. Then we will configure the Nexus 1000V to communicate the SGT to IP mapping to the Internet Firewall ASA that we will be configuring the ACL to enforce the access to the Internet. So let's begin our configuration on the Internet Firewall. So let me bring up the console to the firewall here, Firewall 1. So first we're going to configure the SXP protocol with SXP, CTS, SXP enable to enable the feature. And then we'll configure CTS, SXP. So question mark, we have the option for default, and we want to specify the source IP, and on the firewall, it has the IP of 172.16.10.2.10.2, .10 and then CTS XXP, we also have the option to set the password, a default password, and we just use Cisco, and then we have to configure the SXP connection to the Nexus 1KV. So specify the peer, and on the Nexus 1KV, we'll be using the management interface, which is 172.16.112.16, with using the beef password default. And we specify the peer being in the mode of speaker, since the ASA will be the one that's learning the SGT to IP mapping, so it will be a listener. So we have to specify the peer as a speaker. Okay, so do show run CTS, and these should be all the configuration you need just to get the SXP connection up and running on the firewall side. I also want to make sure that the firewall can ping the management interface on the Nexus 1KV, which it can. So now if we jump to the Nexus 1KV command line, first thing we need to do is to enable the feature since the CTS, which is Cisco TrustSec, is disabled by default. So we do feature. CTS, and now it said that CTS is requires a advanced license, which is CTS is an advanced feature. So if you do not have the advanced license enabled already, and you can check that by show license usage, you can see right here with the LAN services status is unused. To enable the eval advanced license, you can do SPS switch edition, and then you have two options between advanced and essential. By default, essential, and we would like to switch that to advanced. If we do show license usage again, you say the status become in use. Okay, now if you try to enable feature CTS one more time, you can see that uh, we no longer see that errors. Okay, so now we have to configure the SXP just like how we did on the firewall. So first command is to enable, so CTS XXP enable. And then if you've done this on the, the other physical switch, you will know that you have to enable the device tracking so the switch can learn all the IPs of the end host. What we need to do next is CTS device tracking. And then we got the same, the default command that we just did in the firewall with the password being Cisco. And then we also have an option of source IP. And that's our management zero interface, 112.16. Then we can also do a retry period, and this is in second, so we'll say 10. And the last command is to establish the connection, which is SXP connection peer, and we specify the IP of the firewall inside interface, which is 10.2, with the password of default and mode listener. So it's telling the firewall is supposed to be a listener. And at the end, you can even specify the VRF. And for us, it's management. 
Okay, let's do a quick check on the command CTS. Make sure everything looks correct. And then let's see if we can check a connection real quick. So C, show CTS XXP connection. And you can see now the connection status is connected. And the same, same thing on the firewall, if you do show CTS SXP connection, and you see the connection status is on as well. We'll look into more detail as far as the output here, but let's keep going on the configuration and then we will do a couple more show commands. Okay, so now that we have the SXP connection between the switch and the firewall established, next we have to configure the port profile that will be assigned to the Windows 2008 server that we have as a test machine. So configure port profile by default is type VE or V Ethernet. We're going to call it VM underscore VLAN32, and this one is for SGT100. Put in a regular config switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN32. Now we have to, under CTS, you can specify the SGT tab that you want to assign to this port profile or the host attached to this port profile. This one is 100, we have no shut. And we want to make sure we specify the system VLAN 32 state enable. So let's do another one real quick for SGT 101. VMware port switch access, uh, mode access, switch access VLAN 32, CTS, SGT 101. No shut system VLAN 32 state enable. Okay, so now if we go to the vCenter and look at the networking, we should be seeing both of the port profile we just created, SGT 100 and 101. Okay, so now let's move our two of our Windows 2008 server into or assign these port groups to it. So manage host, we know it's located off the ESXi 1. Leave everything default. We're going to migrate the virtual machine. So here instead of VLAN 32, it's going to be VLAN 32 SGT 101 because this is Windows 2008 42 with the green of SGT 101. And the other one is going to be SGT 100. Next, finish. Okay, so it looks like that is done. Now let's do some show commands on the switch side, you can do show CTS and then question mark and you have a couple options. Do show CTS device tracking. Let's just tell you that is enable. Show CTS, let's do row base, SGT map. Looks like right now we only see SGT 100. Let's do it one more time. Let's do uh, another command just to verify. I'm have to go back and check our configuration. So IP SGT entry. Looks like somehow the device tracking hasn't quite learned the IP of the second Windows 2008 server. So let's try it again. Okay, there you go. Looks like it's just learned it. So if we go back and retry the other command that we did previously with the row base SGT map. Okay, there you go. So you can see now there's two of them, SGT 100 map 2.40 and 101 map 2.42 with the VLAN 32 and it says learn on the from the interface. Okay, we did the row base, we did the, let's see what else. Let's go back and try that command one more time. And we see that it's learned through device tracking. So we do show CTS SXP. Okay, and let's look at some of these outputs. Also it's a, it said enable. And just take a quick note here, it said minimum SXP version here is one and maximum is one. So that's pretty much as high as the Nexus 1000 V can go with this uh, version of code. And we'll compare that to what the firewall is running on in the second here. And then the last command that we already did with the show SXP connection, and that shows that the peer IP, the VRF is using the mode of the peer, which is listener, and the connection state, state which is connected. All right, now if we go back to our firewall and do a couple more show commands, actually the one that we did already with the show CTS SXP connection, you can see right here, compared to what we had earlier, it said max version of one. Here on the firewall, it said highest version is two. So that's one different. And on the bottom section here with the peer IP, it shows the switch peer IP 112.16. Connection is good. And you can see it's fallback to version one, which is what's supported by the Nexus 1000V. 
itself is a listener and it said password is default. Okay, so if you do show CTS, there's a couple more commands that we can do. One is SGT map and then just enter. So that shows all the SGT to IP mapping that is learned through, you can see right here, the source is SXP. So these are the two mapping that we had in the switch, which is, which is being communicated to the firewall. And the firewall now has that information as well. Okay, so if you do CTS, let's see, SXP, and you also SGT map, and you pretty much get the same type of information as far as the SGT value, the, IP, the source IP address that it can expect, and where it's learning it from, which is the management IP of the Nexus 1000V, and the same as with the other SGT value. Okay, now that the firewall has the full knowledge of the SGT to IP mapping, for our test server. Next we can construct a access list to enforce the access to internet like we discussed in the beginning of the lab with SGT100 only have HTTP only and SGT101 with ICMP only. Okay so here we're going to do it two ways. The first way we're going to do is by using object group type security and we can call it OBJ SGT for 101. Okay, and then security object, uh, actually service object. Did I do the right type? Looks like I did the service. Okay, let me go back and delete that. Yeah, now with the service security, it's uh, it might get a little confusing there, but make sure you use the correct type. So security object SGT 101. And then you have this security group. You can see you have two options uh, with between tag and name. So if you were to integrate the firewall with the policy server like Cisco ICE, that allows you to create like a name to SGT mapping, then you can configure the object group using the name, but that's not what we do here. So we're just gonna use the raw SGT, our tag, and the value is 101. And he has just said that the value 101 is unknown because it doesn't know about the name. But it's okay. Okay, and then we create our access list. Right now we have no access list at all attached to our inside interface. So we're going to call it from inside extended permit. We want to make sure that we do not block some of the essential traffic like uh, NTP or DNS. Okay, and then for our third line, we're going to permit TCP. We do question mark. You have a option to do object group or security group for SGT100. Let's do inline security group tag. And again, you can see you have two options between the name and the tag. We said we want to allow tag 100 to HTTP only, so 80. And for our tag object group, OBJ SGT101. You want to permit, let's just go back, it's not TCP, it's supposed to be ICMP, object group 101, any, any. That looks like a, there's a syntax error here, so let me kind of go back in the question mark. So, well, instead it's just a regular object group, you have to specify as the object group security. And OBJ SGT 101, any, any. So let's do a quick show run access list just to see what we have so far. Permit NTP DNS and then for TAC 100 we are permitting TCP to port 80 which is HTTP. And then for the TAC 101 which we define under the object group type security we only allow an ICMP. Let's go back to the server before we apply that to the inside interface of the firewall. Let's ping 4222. You can see that's pingable and then let's, let me bring up the other test server, ping 4222. So you can see now we have the ping going on both hosts. Let's apply our access list with the access group command from inside direction is in and the interface inside. Okay, so we'll give it a couple seconds here and see what's happening. So on the win 2842, you can see the ping continues to succeed. On the other hand, if you switch back to the the other host, Win2008DC, you can see the ping drops already. 
And this is because this particular machine has SGT of 100 and all it has is HTTP access. So if you're trying to go to or open a web browser, try both at the same time, okay, and then go to right, cisco.com and also let's do that on this host right here, cisco.com. So you can see with the Win 2008 DC one, it can access internet. In this case, cisco.com, no problem. On the other hand, with the Win 2008 42, since we specify that it has SGTF 101, it can only access ICMP. You can see right here, it cannot get onto the internet on the HTTP of the web. Okay, so if we go back to the firewall and do show access list, so you can see how we have a hit counts for DNS and for the TAC 100, we have hit counts as well. And this is when we're trying to access Cisco.com. And for the TAC 101, we've got hit counts. And that's, we, that's from the continuous ping that we have going on right now. Okay, so if you go, not sure if I have the locking enabled. So let's do locking enable, locking buffer seven. Let's see if we can see any deny here. Okay, so we see one deny. This is coming from a 32.40, which is the host that we, with the SGT value of 100, going to 4.222, and it's being denied by the access list. Okay, we can try to access cisco.com one more time here and see if we can catch a deny. Right here, the deny from TCP source 32.42, which is a host right here that we're trying to access cisco.com, and it's getting denied. And that's because that's they're not being allowed, being attacked of SGT 101. It's not allowed to use HTTP. Okay, so we have successfully configured a Nexus 1000V and ASA to exchange SGT to IP mapping using the SXP protocol, and even enforce that on the using access control list on the firewall based on the SGT value. So if you want to see a more elaborate setup with like dynamic SGT assignment with 802.1x and SGT to name mapping that where the ASA integrates with Cisco eyes and download the SGT to name mapping table. So it can use as part of the ACO that we saw with the option name. Then you can watch our video SEC 0062 eyes 1.1 security group access with ASA 9.1 trust sec. So you can see a lot more in those video. Okay, so that's pretty much wraps up our video on Nexus 1000V with the Cisco Trustec and ASA 9.1. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.